Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, I want to share a little bit about my process work uh, and I'm going to take an illustration from start to finish and what you're going to see me doing here is applying the concept of the drumstick approach to create a buffalo and you know other uh, supporting elements that go with that buffalo. So you can see that I start out with a red brush that I've created. It's my square brush and uh, I'm roughing in the shape of the pose for this buffalo. On a separate display, I actually have a reference and I'm using that reference to go ahead and establish the proportions of the buffalo as well as the pose. Now, later on, I will alter this pose to make it look a little bit more dynamic. I'll want to spread the front legs out a little bit. I'll also want to tilt the head up. So you're seeing me do that here. I'm just uh, using the um, lasso tool to cut. I'm also blocking in shadows uh, at this stage here, just very basic shadows, uh, not only on the figure, but also cast shadows. I didn't really have a specific plan with this. I just started drawing and I'm just kind of building it as I go. So this wasn't really uh, planned from inception from a thumbnail sketch. This is just me um, jamming out. The video is sped up about 300% uh, just because I felt like that might make for a more interesting video. And now I'm kind of thinking about what I want to do next. So I'm going to add a secondary figure. I've got a character here. And what is important with this whole video here is to see the changes that take place. Very, very rarely does uh, an illustration just go uh, from start to finish without any kind of alteration or any kind of erasure or what have you. It's like I'm always changing things around. It's a normal part of the process. Anyone who tells you otherwise is just lying. Uh, it is a very natural part of working. You just look at something and you say that you don't like it and then you'll go back and you'll change it and that is a very, very normal thing to do as an artist. Like you'll see me get rid of the head here because uh, the character is looking a little bit too old. I wanted the character to be uh, lanky, but thin, and maybe uh, a bit more young. And so you can see that I've altered the head to kind of emphasize the chin. And I wanted some interaction between the two characters, so I thought it'd be kind of comical to have the guy putting his hand on the buffalo. Now I'm moving on to the inking phase. I'm uh, dropping the opacity on my pencils uh, stage and I'm going back in with inks. And I'm using basically the same brush that I used for my rough pencils, except now I'm just using black. And I'm thinking about line weight a little bit more. And uh, you can see that my pencils are fairly loose. So I don't normally do a lot of long form videos. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you enjoy watching these, if you like the kind of director's commentary approach. Uh, I'd like to do more of these from time to time, but I just don't want to make my channel all about doing, um, you know, uh, these types of videos. But on the occasion, I think it, it's just good to see how this stuff is actually applied. If you look at both the buffalo as well as the guy, I'm using that drumstick approach quite a bit. You can see it here in the shoes, for example. That's a drumstick. You can also see it in terms of the musculature on the arms. So that's something I want you to keep in mind as you work on your drawings too. Try to find ways of you know, adding asymmetry to your character's form. It'll just make for a much more appealing uh, figure, I think. So now we've... Uh, you know, got both characters here. It's like there's some eye contact. The buffalo is kind of looking at the guy. The legs are spread apart. Just gives him a much more menacing stance. And here I'm using my inks to add some texture, just to kind of imply the idea that the buffalo has a little bit of fur. I'm throwing in some cast shadows, adding my black fills. Adding some black to the drawing, I think, really helps. It just kind of anchors the drawing to the page. 
if you only have colors but you don't have any black in the drawing, it just kind of flattens it out. The drawing has to look good in just black and white. Adding color just accentuates it. Um, if it doesn't look good in black and white or if it feels like empty, then it's probably best to add some black fill. So here I'm adding some background elements, just some rocks. Uh, again, this is all improvisational. Don't really know where I'm going with it, but just kind of feeling it out. It's a fun way to work when you're drawing for your own self. So here I'm adding some fence posts, just to give this uh, environment a little bit more depth. Putting things in the background just gives your subjects a little bit more presence. Makes for a more interesting composition. And I'm adding textures here. So at this stage, uh, you know, normally this is how I would work rough, but I'm just kind of doing this as a final pass. I thought about putting up a sign saying, you know, don't pet the animals or something of that nature, but then I felt that that would take away the focus of what we're actually seeing here. We can see from the personality of the two characters that um, the buffalo is annoyed and the guy petting the buffalo or putting his hand on the buffalo is a little bit cocky, confident. And I think that just pretty much sets up an implied story. So here I'm combining different shading techniques using black fills, using some hatching, filling in any gaps, adding textures. I actually like drawing foliage and plants, they're a lot of fun. Here I'm thickening some of my lines, adding some fabric folds, using some hatching, especially underneath the buffalo's eyes, it just kind of makes them look that much more menacing. Putting some evergreens in the background. Notice that the line weight on the evergreens is much thinner. That's one great way that you can achieve depth. It's not only through the placement of your objects, but it also has to do with the thickness of your line weight. The thicker the line weight, the closer the object is to the viewer, the thinner the line weight, the, the idea is that it looks like it's much more far away. So for all my background elements, I'm using a thinner line weight for all my foreground elements. And I don't have any extreme foreground elements in this particular composition. But if I did have extreme foreground elements, I would make them an even thicker line weight or just use um, silhouetted structures. So now I'm ready to move on to my coloring phase. I'm just closing any gaps uh, within the drawing to make it easier for me to color. I use a lot of selection techniques with the magic wand tool. You'll see as I work here, um, if I'm cutting out a particular color uh, and I've got gaps in my drawing, I just have to just slice off a small bit of that color and then I can make a magic wand tool selection. I find this to be very, very fast to work. Uh, in the ground here is going to be white and I'm making sure to fill in reds everywhere else and I'm taking care not to go ahead and put the red on the same layer as my ink. So my color layer is on a layer below my inks layer and what that does is it allows the inks to still stand out. If you color on the same layer that you ink, what you end up doing is you end up uh, eroding your line weight. And as a result, your lines won't look so crisp and the drawing will just feel, uh, you know, um, a, a bit off. So I'm alternating between using the selection tools here. If you look really carefully, uh, anywhere there are closed gaps, I'm just using the magic wand tool and selecting. But there are certain areas where the gaps are not closed. And what I'll do is if I want to remove a piece, I'll just select it and uh, cut. Sometimes my selections aren't perfect, so I'll just go back in with the brush and I'll, I'll paint the value back in, like for those evergreen trees over there. 
So by using one color, I can now sample from that base color to create all the other colors that are within the composition. I never really go back and forth between the swatches panel. I always try to use the hue saturation panel to dial my colors in. I think it's just a faster way to work. It's also, you know, I think it's much more efficient. Uh, the keyboard shortcut for bringing up the hue saturation control panel um, is Command U. Uh, the way I remember that is U is the middle letter of the word hue. I know it's corny, but that's just how I remember things. Uh, so now I'm going back and adding some green, taking care to put each selection on its own layer it just makes it easier for me to make color adjustments. And when I color, I tend to jump all over the place. I just find things that are easy to color. I start with that first, and then I move into more complicated things. It just depends upon what I feel like doing. I don't have a specific uh, rule of thumb. I look at coloring as a, an opportunity just for me to relax with the drawing and just have some fun. It's kind of a very low pressure thing. Uh, some folks have asked me, do you listen to music or podcasts when you are actually creating a, an illustration? And the answer is no. I do not use any kind of music or podcast when I'm creating. When I'm coloring or I'm you know, working on some details where I've already established the composition, yeah, then at that point I'll usually throw on a podcast. I like dialogue-based audio when I work. It's just... Um, you know, kind of blends in with the background a little bit better than something that's music. Or I'll listen to something that's very familiar. I don't like to listen to new music when I'm working because then it kind of takes me away from the focus of working. So I'll pick a song or an album uh, that I'm uh, very, very familiar with and uh, just put that there so I can just have it in the background. So you can see I've pretty much knocked the background out now and I'm working on the colors for the guy using the magic wand selection tool. I'm using the lasso tool to select the ears or the horn on the buffalo. And I think it's you know, at least for this composition, I didn't want to have too many saturated values. I wanted the colors to be a bit more muted. When you have really saturated colors everywhere, it just makes it difficult to know where to focus. I've got other videos on the topic which are on my YouTube channel, you can check out, that talks a little bit more specifically about my approach to coloring in terms of the techniques that I actually use. Uh, if you have watched those videos and if you're already using those techniques, I'd like to know what you think about them. Are they helping you out? Is it a faster way for you to work? What have you discovered on your journey as you level up? Uh, you can write that in the comments below. As always, I'm hoping that you're getting value out of these videos. I do appreciate the likes and the subscribes. Thank you so much for those of you that have done that. For those of you that have added comments to my videos, thank you. I want to keep this channel very interactive and very engaging uh, because I want to know what you're working on. So here's a clever technique that I use. I'm just using the rectangular selection tool to make a selection of all the background so I can fill that in with blue. And I will show you the final image now. As always, thanks for watching the videos and uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.